principle of superposition. In principle of superposition, we are going to see first what is superposition. Superposition basically means to add two or more quantities. In this case, if we are dealing with force, that is Coulomb force, so we are going to add two or more forces which are acting at a point at one instant. So in that condition, you have to sum up all the forces and the resultant would be the summation of all forces. So this is called the principle of superposition. In order to understand it, we have to first draw a diagram. It is a y-axis and this is a x-axis. Now, in this condition, we are going to take some charges. So, in this condition, I have taken four charges. Okay, now, let's see here. This is first charge. Let me represent it by Q1. Let us say this is second charge. Let's say Q2. This is third charge. Let's say Q3. And this is fourth charge. Let's say Q4. They are separated or they are distributed randomly all over an X, Y coordinate. Now you can see you have to find out the position vector for it. The position vector is always found from the origin. So this is your origin, okay, that is 0, 0, x is 0 and y is 0. So let's first start with q1. What is the position of q1? The position of q1 is always taken from the reference point, that is the origin. So let's mark it as r1. r1 is a position vector. Same as for q2 also, there is also a position, let's say r2. For q3 also, there is a position vector, let's say r3. And likewise for 4 also we have a position vector, let's say R4. These are your position vectors, the line is straight here but I think it's not looking straight, now it is straight. So you can see that these are the 4 lines, okay, R1, R2, R3 and R4, these are the straight line that joins the charges with that of the origin. Now you can see that these all charges, they are going to experience some force. For my simplicity, I have done that all charges, that is Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, I have taken as positive. All are positive charges. So in this condition, all charges are going to provide the repulsion force on one another. I am going to take for reference Q1. Now I have to find the net resultant force on charge Q1. Now you see, first let me consider Q1 with respect to Q2. Now you see that Q2 is positive, Q1 is also positive. So positive, positive repel each other. So the, what will be the force of repulsion? The force of repulsion is in this direction. So this is the direction of F of 1, 2. Now, likewise, Q3 is also positive. So, Q3 and Q1, if I compare Q3 and Q1, then this is positive, this is positive. Both are going to repel each other. What is the direction of repulsion? The direction of repulsion you can see is this direction. So, this is represented as F of 1, 3 is a vector quantity. Now, let me come to 4. Q4 and Q1. Okay, Q1 is reference. So, you have to take all charges with respect to Q1. Now, Q4 is positive. Q1 is also positive. So, there is some interaction point between Q4 and Q1. So, what is the force which is exerted by 4 on 1? The Force is repulsion. So, the direction of this repulsive force is this. That is F of 1, 4. Now, you can see here that F of 1, 2 is the direction of the force exerted by Q2 on Q1. F of 1, 3 is the direction of force which is exerted by Q1 from Q3. F of 1, 4 is the direction on Q1 which is exerted by Q4. So now you can see all forces play their important role in this diagram. 
Now, if I have to find the resultant force on Q1, so this resultant force is represented by capital F. The principle of superposition tells that if there is one single charge and there are various forces that are acting on that same charge, then the net force is equal to the summation of all distinct charges. Like for example, capital F is the net force that I like to find. Okay, so according to principle of superposition, it is F12 plus F13 plus F14. So this law is called the principle of superposition. Now you have understood that F12 is one force, F13 is another force, F14 is the third force. Okay, and it goes on and on till F1n. N is your integer value. That is, you can increase your force from 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10, 100 and so on. So that's why I have represented it with a integer value. That is small n. On this particular principle, I am going to solve this diagram. Okay, how I am going to solve it? Let's see. First, find out the force F of 1, 2. How F of 1, 2 is found? F of 1, 2 is found by same Coulomb's law, 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. 1, 2, that is Q1 and I am talking about Q2. Now, what is the distance of separation? The distance of separation is from 1 and 2. That is, you see that I am talking about the force which is coming from 2 to 1. So, what is my distance? It is R of 2, 1. So, now the position vector I think is clear to you that if we have to take the force in suppose in the leftward direction, so the position vector is also found in the leftward direction. Okay. In the case of this, if I have to find F12, then the position vector is also in this direction. That is from 2 to 1. That is R of 2, 1. So, now we will represent it as R of 2, 1 whole square. Now, in this condition, you have to find the unit vector also. So, this is a unit vector with a cap on it. Now, let me solve this equation. It becomes 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q1, Q2. Now, you see that this unit vector has a particular formula. The formula is R1 minus R2 upon R21 whole Q. So, this is all we have already talked about so I have written it directly. Now like we have found for f of 1, 2, we have to find for f of 1, 3. That is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 into q3. Now what is the unit vector in this case? The unit vector now becomes 3 of 1 with a cap on it and the denominator would be r of 3, 1 whole square. Now you can see that how this r 3, 1 comes. See here. This is f of 1, 3 which I have to find from here. Okay, it is going in rightward direction. So, you have to take a position vector in rightward direction. So, what it becomes? It becomes r of 3, 1 with a vector quantity. That is the position is going from 3 to 1. That is r of 3, 1. So, I have mentioned here. Now, resolve the unit vector 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. Q1, Q3, you see the formula for it now becomes R1 minus R3 upon R31 whole cube. The same formula as we have discussed, only the values have changed. Likewise, we can solve for F of 1, 4. Now, the resultant of all these forces are found by principle of superposition. So, here we are not dealing with one force. We are dealing with one, two, three, three forces. So, we need to go for principle of superposition. Okay, that is total resultant is equals to F of 1, 2 plus F of 1, 3 plus f of 1, 4. So, you got the value for 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4. Just put the values and keep on adding. So, I have put all the values here and my equation turns like this. Oh my god, it's a very, very big equation. Now, let's simplify it and make it in a very precise form. So, how we will do it? We will use summation sign. Okay. Now, let's see here. This is force. Okay. 
first you have to take all the things which is in common out of the bracket okay see here 1 by 4 pi epsilon not q1 1 by 4 pi epsilon not q1 1 by 4 pi epsilon q1 i think these values are common in these three quantities so what we are going to do we are going to take these values out that is 1 by 4 pi epsilon not into q1 is taken out of the summation sign now we will put a summation sign in this case you can see if i'll throw a loop okay i'll assign this two three four and so on with some specific value like for example i have taken a small value that is i i we can say is a loop okay and i'm going to assign this i at some initial value now you can see what is the initial value forget about q1 because q1 is out next is your q2 you are saying that here it is q2 here it is q3 here it is q4 they are increasing one step forward so if i will assign a loop and give it is a value let's say 2 and mark this value till let's say n so it resembles that my i that is a loop goes from 2 till n first value of i becomes 2 the second value of i is 3 4 5 6 and it goes till where it goes till small n value now you see that this loop which i am talking about what are the values that come under it the value that comes under it is the value that keeps on constantly increasing like i am talking about q this q i am talking about if i will assign it as q of i so you see that in the first case it will give the value 2 so this equation satisfied then the loop get incremented by 1 that is the next value of i becomes 3 so this value is also satisfied next the loop is incremented by 1 that is 3 plus 1 it becomes 4 so this value is also satisfied so q of i we can put it in a loop now you can see that r1 is common, r1 is common, r1 is common. So it is not a part of the loop. We can't assign i to it. So it will remain as r1. Okay, next step is you can see r2, r3, r4. It keeps on increasing. So now it also becomes the part of the loop. That is we can assign it as r of i. In the first case, it becomes 2, so first one satisfied. In the second case, it becomes 3, so this satisfied and then the 4 and it keeps on increasing. Now, come to the denominator part. The denominator part is this. You can see that R of 2, 3, 4, so it is increasing. So instead of it, I am going to assign a value I. 1, 1, 1. It is constant. So no role of I here. So it will remain I of 1 whole Q. So now you can see from this formula, this whole value, this whole equation and the equation also doesn't get end. This equation it up to infinity till the value of n. Okay, it can be 5, 6, 7 and goes on and on. But I have assigned a very simple formula for it and putting in this formula you can calculate any number of forces and this is called principle of superposition. You can define this loop under as i is equals to 2, 3, 4, 5 and it goes till n. So this is the loop I have assigned with a summation sign on it.